Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, there's something you should know. There's nothing I love more than a fluoro pink bike, especially a 90s steel mountain bike. And that's the focus of today's video. Today, I have a bit of a resto mod commuter build using this beautiful MBK tracker. First though, I need to get this frame sorted. Today's frame of choice is the 1991 MBK Tracker High Tech. MBK did some beautiful paint schemes and for me, this is one of the best. The Tracker was MBK's top offering in 91, kitted out in a complete XT group. It's a rare bike here in the UK. I've only ever seen one other and that was removed from sale just before I bought it. But years later, I saw this one. I don't have any pictures of how I bought it, but let's just say it was a half finished build using the cheapest components. Not good. I had to have it just for the frame set though. It has future restoration potential, but today I've got something else planned. The paintwork is beautiful, but it's definitely battered. To try and restore some colour and remove some of the rust and scratches, I'm using the finest grade wire wool with some T cut. It's abrasive enough to remove some imperfections, but not enough to leave deep scratches. Still, you have to be careful of the decals, and in my case, the purple paint sprayed over the pink base. Once I was happy with the T cut job, I finished it off with some auto glim car polish. It was a good bit of polishing, but now the frame is ready for my slightly ratty commuter build. Oof, I love that paint. <laughs> I think on this one I'm going to do a little voiceover at points to throw a little bit of info at you. When it came to the headset, I wasn't happy with the one the bike came with, but it just so happened I had a Dior DX headset stashed away. It was perfect. Uh, it honestly went in a little easy. bit too easy though, so it could be a sign the headset is getting a bit worn, or the head tube, uh, but once it all came together with some fresh Shimano grease, it felt great. I'm going for a bit of a cruiser vibe with this build, so I'm using a threadless adapter to fit in the Zonic shorty stem and some MX style bars. Don't worry about the gap under the stem or above it, 
I add an adapter later because I changed my mind with the brakes. The bars actually felt a little bit big when trying to fit the brake levers and the shifters so maybe the paint or powder coating is a little bit thicker than usual. I'm throwing on a 9 speed altus drive train for now but I do have plans for upgrades once I get their special shifter that I have on pre-order. Um, and as for the grips, this always gets asked. I'm using hairspray to lube up and stick down the grips and these particular ones are Auri grips, Auri grips which glow in the dark and straight onto the brakes these are a cheap set of Diacomp V brakes I regret buying them once I got the rear fitted and found it kept locking up I ditched them and put on some proper braking power some Dior LX canties oh, with cool stop pads v -brakes, aren't they? What is going on with these? <laughs> Great, it didn't work. Here, for anyone wondering, this is a menorah bottle cage and they have some awesome colours. With a bike that's clearly not had the easiest life, I've had to clean out some of the threads. The brake posts, this derailleur hanger and later the bottom bracket. While I was at it though, I thought I'd check the hanger alignment. And yep, it's ever so slightly out. It didn't take much to bend it back though. Steel is good like that. I think it goes without saying here, but building bikes and rain don't mix. So as the heavens open and the wind picks up, Beautiful. I'm taking a break. It's not everyone's taste, but on this build, I'm going one by. It's a bit of a guess getting the right chain line though when grabbing random crank sets and bottom brackets. So to work out which side of the new spider my new train ring should fit, I'm stealing an idea from Gary's projects. By using a long rule and holding it against two arms of the spider, you can roughly work out where the best place for the chain ring to sit is. For me, I felt the best place was on the inside of the spider. It looked to be more centrally placed on the free hub, which is usually the case in these conversions, 
unless you use a much shorter bottom bracket axle. Yeah, should do. Okay, rack time. I picked this one up off Amazon, link in the description, and I think it's really well made. It's just a flat style rack so you need some straps or a net to hold the cargo down but the mounting on this rack seems a lot more solid than the basil rack I saw someone mention issues with the Altus 9 speed on one of my reels and yeah, Altus isn't the best and it has been a bit temperamental but like I mentioned before, okay. it's only temporary. Hopefully next month this will have a brand new drivetrain on it. Yes, the brakes have been swapped. The Dior RLX Canties suit this build so much better. I had a couple of sets lying around, so one of them is now on this bike and working great. I fitted some cool stop salmon pads into the original LX carriers, so that makes things 10 times better. For the rear, I tried to position the hanger quite close to the tire to give a more powerful feel, but on the front, I was limited by the rack support. And yes, as much as I spotted the pad carrier was the one way around, I didn't spot their specifically labelled front and rear. I'm not sure what the difference is though. They both look the same shape and they work great as they are.
Alter. Yeah, I'm good, it's a bit slippy there. <laughs> okay, so there it is. My new commuter and a crash thrown in for good measure. It's a bike I've thrown together with lots of bits I had lying around, and I've loved it. Of course, there are bits I need to upgrade, the tyres for one, but the mileage I've done so far has been extremely comfy. The electric motor on the front is so much fun, it takes the effort out and adds a bit more fun and comfort, but I'm probably going to take it off in the next version of this build. I found it so comfy with the moto bars too. The extra width and height, combined with a short stem, just gives that more relaxed ride. I love the rack. It's strong and stable, and although I do miss the sides that my basil rack has, I think this one is a bit more versatile and stronger. The LX brakes with the cool stop pads are faultless, but the worn 9 speed ultra strive tone definitely needs an upgrade. All that is coming very soon though. This video was meant to be out a month ago, but uh, well, stuff happened, or didn't happen to be more precise, and I couldn't release it, so after a re-edit, here we are. I already have all the parts for the upgrade, so I might as well get on with that now. I hope you enjoyed this little build. Pink bikes rule, all of us drool. Keep the rubber side down, and I'll see you in the next one.